guys, how you going? So today on Big House Sport, we're going to be talking about the Socceroos and how I hope that their success in the World Cup, the FIFA World Cup that is, obviously translates to the A-League. Now, this is a very difficult topic and difficult conversation to have because obviously this is an issue that we have in Australia quite frequently in regards to support of the domestic league in the A-League. I'm not going to call it the A-Leagues. I know there is the Women's A-League and the Men's A-League, but it's not really necessarily what we're talking about here today. Obviously, mainly we are talking about the Men's A-League and creating a lot of support around it. The FIFA World Cup for the Women's is coming up next year in Australia. Hopefully that garners some success, but for the time being, obviously we're talking about the Men's World Cup, so we're going to be really specifically referring to the men's A-League here. Now, obviously, you guys know I do love my football. And if you do have been around this channel for quite some time, you then know that I'm a Brisbane Raw supporter and I love the A-League. I have loved the A-League for a very long time. But in recent years, unfortunately, things have kind of changed. I've fallen out of love with the game, as a lot of people have after the fiasco of, you know, 2016, 2017, 2018 kind of FFA deal. It never really kind of was able to garner the same interest in myself as it did previously to that because it really was gaining traction. It really was growing. It was really looking quality. And although I did still watch it and I did still, I guess, create content for it, it just didn't really have that same passion uh, for the Brisbane Raw or the team. And I, I guess that also does come into line with the fact that they weren't doing too well and they aren't doing too well right now. And that I do have issues with the ownership and, and, and what kind of support they have for the club as owners and blah, 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 blah. Also, I've had my own issues with the Brisbane Raw over time on a personal level. But, you know, overall, I want to support this league. Overall, I want to support this league. I want to be a person who advocates this league in the A-League. I don't necessarily want to promote the Premier League when the Premier League is already promoted enough. You know, I love my football, I love my team, but there's no need to promote it because that's already got worldwide traction. We need to start creating a lot more support in regards to our local league. And with that, we'll see more success for the Socceroos in the future because it's been a fantastic World Cup. You know, for someone like myself and I guess a lot of you guys as well, who have been watching throughout the qualifiers, you know, when we drew to China, uh, when we lost to Japan, drew with Saudi Arabia, you know, a lot of those moments where we thought we'd never make it, and then to go through United Arab Emirates, and then also Peru, which was a massive shock in the first place, because Peru was a massive nation, to get drawn in a group with France and Denmark, and no one gave us a chance, a lot of people actually had Tunisia above us as well, uh, Tunisia did finish above Denmark to be fair, but that's the crazy thing, you know, we lose to France, go and beat Tunisia, and then go and beat Denmark for the first time that we've ever won two games in a row at a World Cup. You know, it was a crazy, crazy time for us Australians who have supported this through thick and thin. And then to get to Argentina in the round of 16 and only lose by a goal and actually have a couple of really good opportunities late was a dream come true. And although a lot of people don't understand that, they don't understand that it means a lot just to be there for Australians rather than to go on and win it because winning it was never our goal. Winning it was never Australia's goal, was never even a remote thought process. You know, even when we were doing so well, yeah, you want to be that team like I guess Morocco are, like the Ghana of 2010, uh, you know, 2014, I think it was Costa Rica. You'll always see a random team get to the quarterfinals that you never really expected to get there. And I guess in the back of our minds, we all thought that and hoped that it was going to be us. But I guess Morocco have taken that this time around because they're into the quarterfinals. And look, it's not completely out of it. They get to the semis. But the fact of the matter is, is that every single part of that World Cup was a success for the Socceroos. Look at the support that we saw in Fed Square in Melbourne to Sydney, Adelaide, Brisbane, uh, you know, the star on the Gold Coast, even Perth, we had numbers go out there. Newcastle, I don't know about Canberra, but I'm certain there probably would have been people who went to Canberra. I just know it's been an absolutely phenomenal time, a phenomenal time in these last couple of weeks of supporting this sport and supporting this code. And I really hope that the numbers that we gained throughout this time really do transfer into giving the A-League a go. I don't necessarily want people just to follow and, and, and go into it expecting to love it. I want people to go into it with an open mind that... The A-League is only as bad as your perspective makes it. Don't compare it to the Premier League. Don't even go down and compare it to the MLS because the MLS is based on old talent from Europe going across there that helps build their younger lads. 
the A-League is more so built as a domestic league that we bring up our local talent, but also bring a couple of players here and there from lower leagues in South America or, you know, maybe a star or two very occasionally, like a David Villa, um, you know, Perlo, those kind of guys. But overall, it's not really built for that. It's not really about that at all. It is realistically about the domestic talent to bring them through. And then hopefully, eventually, well, hopefully they don't become a Daniel Lazani where they think that they're too big for their boots already and then go overseas and then absolutely tank it. You know, that was one of the most disappointing Australian players I've ever seen, truly. Daniel Lazani, for me, I can't believe the fourth form grace that he had. And that's because players, unfortunately, they think they get too good for the game. They go too quickly and then forget, I guess, how they've gotten to where they have. And they forget that they still need to progress a lot through the A-League. Because obviously you go to those second division, third division, Danish leagues, and you know anywhere in Scandinavia, realistically, uh, Europe in general, it is a waste. And you are wasting. Unless you're Aaron Moy, who has solidified his spot at, I think it was Huddersfield at the time, truly, like it, it is pointless. So the A-League needs to be given a lot more credit and respect than it does get. And, and I'm, I'm a part of this as well. You know, I, I'm not going to shy away from the fact that I haven't insulted the A-League for being boring or dead because the last couple of years, I have tried to get back into it. But I just haven't really been able to. I have noticed, though, that the fan support has really been starting to garner traction again, which is the main point for getting people out to support this game, especially when you're competing with the likes of Rugby League and AFL. Now... You shouldn't actually be competing with rugby league and AFL because I don't believe that football in this country, soccer for everyone, sorry, I call it football. You guys, everyone calls soccer, I don't care. But for most people, obviously rugby league is Queensland, New South Wales and ACT. And then you've got AFL, which is uh, Victoria, South Australia, Western Australia and Tasmania with Northern Territory being relatively 50-50. AFL fans like to claim it, NRL fans like to claim it. If you look at the numbers, it is actually 50-50. So you don't really class Northern Territory as much. Um, but overall, you know, you shouldn't be comparing to those because I don't think that football in this country could ever go above those two. If you guys watch my streams enough, you know that I always say, this part of the world, what people love is seeing a, a guy being a bigger man than the other guy. You know, being a brawny, solid, smash him, you know, give him a bloody shoulder to the head. I know it's crazy, but that's just how people down in this southern hemisphere area think. Asia, it's all about being pinpoint perfection. Europe, is all about being beautiful. Um, South America, is just about being lunatics and then, you know, crazy um, in, in a good way. And then you go to North America, which is all about tricking the opponent, right? And that's why I don't ever believe that football will be the number one sport in this country. Would love it to be, but it's not going to be, in my personal opinion. So realistically, you've got to be looking at raising the bar over the likes of cricket and rugby union because they're very susceptible. I do believe, however, if the Wallabies got successful again, they would really rise up. I truly believe that that's the number one national sport in this country when it comes to the national teams and the Wallabies versus the Socceroos or the Australian cricket and whatnot. I think cricket is very much just a summer's game to get everyone through, and it's a historical kind of game. Uh, you know, it takes us back to our our roots as a country, uh, cricket comparatively. So I, I don't think that cricket, I think cricket people are always going to get around in the summer, but overall, I do see a, a reach of being that third biggest sport in the country. I really do. And not too separated overall from those, those top two, but I just don't see those top two ever being overtaken. That doesn't mean that we should give up on the growth of the sport in this country. I, I really think that the numbers that we've seen from all those places that I mentioned before have been absolutely unreal in the support that has been shown for this country. And I know I can see the argument of we're actually supporting Australia, not the sport. And I do get that. I do understand that. But there's no way you can tell me that when you had that moment, when Matty Leckie scored that goal, or Mitch Duke headed it into the back of the net, or even when Craig Goodwin got a deflected goal that put into the back of the net, when those flares went off, when everyone went nutso, when everyone went crazy, you can't tell me that that's not crazier than a moment in the AFL and a moment in the rugby league. And I'm a big rugby league fan, big AFL fan. I love all sports. I'm not competitive in regards to sports because I literally, I love all of them, right? That's a big problem with Australia too, is that for some reason, people don't want to to give credit to another sport because they want their sport to be best. But it's like, it's very easy to follow AFL, follow a rugby league, follow football, follow cricket, follow rugby union, follow all these different sports. It's not that hard. For some reason, people are so competitive about wanting their sport to be better that they can't respect the opposite sport, which is very unfortunate. But what I was saying was that that one moment in football 
really does encompass how exciting the sport actually is. And now a lot of people obviously say, oh, nil nils, one nils, boring. You know, and I get it. I do. I understand it. If you don't, if you don't understand why nil nil can be exciting or one nil can be exciting, I understand why you would find it boring. I do. It's the same thing with baseball. You know, a lot of people don't understand baseball, and I get that too. With football, it's all about that one moment and being able to go crazy and celebrate. And, and that's when our whole country lifted off. And I get it's for Australia. But if you're proud of Sydney, then you can have that moment with the Cove at Sydney FC. If you're a Brisbane Raw fan like myself, you can go to the Den. You know, I've been seeing the Den numbers getting back up and around it lately, which has been great to see. You know, I used to be a part of the Den. Unfortunately, I remember, actually, this is a big reason why A-League Vlog stopped was because they were trying to get rid of the den. And there's actually a vlog on the channel, I think it was Brisbane Rule Melbourne Victory, which I named and titled The Death of Active Areas because they were telling us like we couldn't say certain things, had to sit down. If you guys, I'm not going to go into the history of the FFA versus the fans, but if you're an A-League fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The thing is, is that you've got a place that you can celebrate with your city. And I understand everyone's got their passion for Australia, but be passionate about your city too. I would love there to be a Gold Coast Sand. There used to be a Gold Coast Sand got kicked out, but you know, I am a Brisbane Raw fan, so the Den is the place to go. Sydney FC, you've got the Cove. Wanderers, you've got the RBB. I'm going to be the first person to say that I'm going to get back into it. And I, 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 want to, I want to stop delaying, and I want to stop ignoring, because I want to see us be successful. I said this on my soccer streams. In the last, I think, two years, three years, I really came to terms and, and said to myself that I don't believe that I will ever witness a Socceroos World Cup win. You know, when I came to terms with that, I said, look, we're going to get the Rugby League, you know, we'll probably win the Rugby Union World Cup one day, I don't know when, but one day. Uh, cricket, obviously, we still kill it in, in everything. We've got the most titles ever. Um, you know, basketball, maybe not, but in the same sense, we're, at least we're a bronze, you know, and I, I'm not necessarily too caring about that, but it's still Australia, so I want to see them win over America, it'd be amazing. Um, you know, but the Football World Cup is a little bit of a different breed because it's all Brazil cares about. It's all Argentina cares about. It's effectively all England cares about. I know they've got rugby and cricket, but it's effectively all they care about. You know, the likes of Italy and Spain and Germany and, and France and, and all these places, even the likes of Denmark, you know, and Peru, the, the two teams that we beat, those are two teams that simply only care about football. Right, so I, I came to terms with the fact that I thought we'd never, ever see the day that we win the World Cup. And I was okay with it because I was like, I'll just celebrate and be happy that we're competing and whatnot. Now there's 48 teams that effectively guarantees you a spot. It's a bit wank. The, the new system for the World Cup is a bit wank because you're already guaranteed so the qualifiers are effectively going to mean jack shit. Right, so be prepared for that. Um, but this last World Cup has... This last World Cup has changed my thought process. I don't think we are as far away from being a competitive team as people allude to. I don't. I don't think that we are gigantically off the pace. That 4-1 against France, I think for, at, well, at least the first 30 minutes, we weren't a better team. We were up 1-0. And then two silly mistakes made it 2-1. And then we weren't too bad for the most part, but then obviously they did just put us to bed, right? And the same thing happened with uh, Aratina in the sense that we were actually really good for most of that game, right? I know we went down 2-0, but the, the second goal came because of a goalkeeper error that was really, really silly, you know? And the first goal, it was fine. You know, it was a goal, f fair enough. And the second goal was fair enough too. It's just a very silly goalkeeper error. You can really get rid of that. So it could have easily been 1-1, and it could have easily been 2-2. Like, and this is against Argentina, who have Lionel Messi, you know, one of the best players of all time, if not the best player of all time, currently playing. Uh, and, you know, just Argentina, with the name comes Diego Maradona, you know, comes those kind of names. We don't have those kind of names. Our names are Timmy Cahill, which to us is massive, but everywhere else is like, oh, yeah, he was a good player, but oh, whatever, you know. <laughs> That's how they think Timmy Cahill. So I don't think that we're crazily off the pace we only lost to one of the best teams in the world 2-1. We only lost to one of the best teams in the world 2-1. When this is our fifth sport. It's our fifth sport. I just think there's a lot of positivity in the numbers that came out. I think there's a real lot of positivity in the numbers that came out. Yes, I know that a lot of those will just be like, oh, it was Australia, I'm just supporting Australia. I'm aware of that. And I'm aware that it really does depend on how good this weekend goes. I would say that people are going to give it a chance because there's nothing else on. So they'll give the A-League a chance this weekend. If the games are shit hours, 
people will go back to not giving a shit. If the games are good, they'll give them a chance. I think that's probably how it's going to go. So a lot does run this weekend or the next couple of weekends, effectively. And I think there will be a World Cup hangover in the sense that there will be just people who come and watch it and, and get into it because they're still in that sufferer's mindset. And then they will kind of trinkle away. But I do see that we'll get at least some fans from the success of the Socceroos. And I think that a lot of people will kind of also remember that when we saw that Wanderers versus Sydney FC game, just before the World Cup, it was packed out. It was awesome atmosphere. You know, Like I said, I've been seeing numbers in the den rising again. I've been seeing numbers across the A-League rising again. I hope it's not just because of the World Cup. But you've got to utilise it and gain this momentum from this World Cup. I think we all know that. So please don't go out there and insult people saying, oh, you're a bandwagoner, you know, blah, 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 blah. You're, you're only watching because of the World Cup. You know, please don't do that because you're an idiot if you do that. You, like, you defeat the whole purpose of wanting these people to join, yeah? Please welcome them in. Say, come on to the Cove. You know, come to the RBB. Come to the Den. Come to these places. You know, please support the teams. Because that's what we want, because that will in turn get more funding for the A-League, get more funding for grassroots. It will create more support for our local players who will then become better and then eventually potentially be able to compete on the world stage. Especially in America, where that's going to be on a great time zone for us. They'll be on like 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m. kind of deal. Great time zone for us. So let's gain this momentum. Let's gain this traction. And... I'm going to create content for it. I'm going to really get back into the A-League and I really want this this domestic league to pick up to where we were before. And I think it has the potential. That's what I'll say. I think it has the potential to pick up to where it was before. But we do have to sacrifice the perspective of watching Premier League football for Australian football because it's completely different. It's completely different. Believe in our country, believe in the guys that we're bringing through, because that's what I'm starting to believe in. I'm starting to really kind of move on from that shit that happened late 2010s, that only A-League fans really, truly understand. And if you're actually a part of an active area or whatnot, then, you know, you would know exactly what I'm talking about in regards to those times. And I was a part of the den at that time. So yeah, I really hope, I really, I really have a lot of high beliefs for it. A lot of high beliefs. And that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, I'm going to stream the content this week. I'm going to stream the games this weekend. Let's get excited. Let's get back into the A-League. Let's pump it out and let's support this code. And let's get the Socceroos into a good stead and a good situation for 2026. Now guys, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys this weekend. Also, we're posting videos every single day. So absolutely smack it in. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.